microbes are no longer there or they're in smaller they were going to show you how to make thick and shiny hair and as you know with my videos i like to tell you what's behind things what's the root cause of certain things and when we talk about hair realize that anything going on with your hair is the tip of the iceberg and i'm not interested in having you take more supplements we're going to relate a lot of this to your diet and food because ultimately that's the best source but let's start with biotin this is a b vitamin a lot of people take biotin and it does help the thickness of your hair it helps your nails, it helps your skin. But why do you need to take biotin? Are we deficient in biotin? Biotin can come from the diet, but it can also come from your own gut microbiome. Your good bacteria make biotin. And one side effect of antibiotics is a problem with your hair. And that's because certain microbes are no longer there or they're in smaller amounts and they're just not making enough biotin. There's a huge connection between some alteration in your gut and problems with your hair because of a biotin deficiency. This is why people that start taking biotin might see a change, but then when they stop taking biotin, the hair problem comes right back. A couple other reasons why people might be deficient in biotin is that they're, they eat raw eggs. There's a certain chemical in the egg that if you don't cook it, can combine with biotin, lock it up and prevent the absorption. If you cook the whites of the egg, Okay, not the yolk. You don't have to worry about it. You're not going to become deficient in biotin. Alcohol is another reason why people are deficient in biotin. Alcohol messes with your liver. It also messes with the absorption of biotin. What are the best sources of biotin? Liver, egg, yolks. Here you have this great biotin that's in the yolk that won't be absorbed because of some other chemical in the white of the egg. So this is why you need to cook your eggs, but just make sure the yolk is a bit runny. Nutritional yeast has biotin and salmon has biotin. Another little side note is that if you're magnesium deficient, which a lot of people are, that could be the reason why you're not absorbing biotin. I've done a ton of videos on magnesium, very, very important. Also, zinc is a helper to biotin as well, and so is copper. Let's move over to vitamin A. We're talking about the active form of vitamin A called retinol, which is only in animal products. Of course, the best source of vitamin A is in liver, and egg yolks but you can also get it in shellfish and cod liver oil what's so important about vitamin a in relationship to your hair vitamin a helps control sebum and makes your hair very very shiny let's go to omega-3 fatty acids you have omega-3 fatty acids and then you have omega-6 fatty acids so when people are consuming a lot of seed oils corn oil vegetable oil those oils are very very bad for a lot of problems in your body, including your hair. So both the omega-3 and omega-6 kind of compete. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate the omega-6 fats and increase omega-3 fatty acids because omega-3 is so important in making the hair thick and making your hair shiny. And you can get omega-3 fatty acids from fish oils, but if you get it from cod liver oil, you also get some additional benefits. Vitamin A, also vitamin D, Let's move on to this right here. What is this L ruteri thing? Well, it stands for lactobacillus ruteri. This is a microbe. And there's a lot of research on this microbe. This microbe is missing in 96% of the population because we've all had antibiotics in our past. And L ruteri does a lot for our bodies. But one of the things that it does very specifically is it increases sebum, that oil that helps the hair become very, very shiny. And it also stimulates hair growth. There's a lot to talk about this microbe. I'm going to put a video down below. If you haven't seen a video on this, you should watch it. It's something that's fascinating. Now I want to get to this really important topic of copper. Copper does a lot. It's involved in a lot of different enzymes. This is an enzyme that's using copper to help regulate iron, preventing the accumulation of iron in your tissues. Iron is really important in hair growth because it helps oxygen feed the roots of the hair. It helps the growth of the hair. It helps your hair become thicker and it helps with the collagen formation. What I didn't know back then that I now know is that iron is controlled by copper. If you fix your copper situation, you can actually fix your iron situation, but it's not necessarily to take another copper supplement because you need to understand how you became deficient in copper in the first place and one of the ways that we're deficient in copper is that a lot of farmers use npk nitrogen phosphorus and potassium fertilizers when you use a lot of nitrogen you get a lot of growth of grass and other vegetation but at the same time you're creating micronutrient deficiencies especially 
copper. If the grass and vegetation are deficient in copper, the animals will become deficient in copper. There's a fascinating book right here called Soil, Grass, and Cancer, a very thick book. It's actually a very expensive book. It was like $250, but I want to just give you a very quick summary. Copper deficiency caused by nitrogen fertilizers. They're talking about the details of how many farmers use this fertilizer for the grass to grazing animals, but also to make the hay that they feed the animals in the winter. And they're showing statistics on trace minerals and coppers tank down to zero. But what's really interesting in the book, it talks about how that shows up in sheep and cattle as far as their hair. The hair on cows becomes very, very dull. It loses its luster. It loses its shine. If this is happening with sheep and cows, you know, is it possible it can happen to our bodies? The answer is yes. So NPK is one of the causes of a deficiency of copper. Also, when we consume too much iron, all the wheat products and grain products are fortified with iron and taking too much iron locks up your copper as well. We lose like 0.5 milligrams to one milligram a day, yet the RDAs or the recommended iron per day is like eight to 18 milligrams. So there's a big problem with iron. Vitamin A and copper work together. They need each other to work. You go on a low fat diet, you end up with a low retinol or vitamin A situation, and that's going to affect copper as well. High fructose corn syrup depletes copper. If you're consuming a lot of junk food, this could be why you have a problem. If you're taking a lot of zinc for a long period of time, that can deplete copper. So I always recommend taking your zinc in a blend of other trace minerals. And also, if you're taking magnesium, I'd recommend taking it in a form as magnesium glycinate. I know I gave you a lot of information. I'm going to summarize it right now. You want to start taking probiotic foods, beefer, sauerkraut, kimchi, because you want to start building up your gut microbiome. Number two, if you like liver, start consuming liver in your diet. The liver has copper. Egg yolks, good source of biotin and vitamin A. And of course, cod liver oil for your omega-3 fatty acids. I personally like cod liver in cans. That will give you the omega-3 fatty acids, the vitamin D, the vitamin A, and there's some copper in there as well because it's a liver and that's where a lot of nutrition is concentrated. Number five, organic foods. Why? Because glyphosate in the Roundup Ready is very, very damaging and it creates deficiency in the soil and also in your body if you are consuming it. Now you might say, well, I only eat non-GMO food. Well, did you know that wheat is sprayed with this glyphosate as something to dry it out? If you eat organic, you're not going to get this glyphosate. And then trace minerals are really important to get copper, to get zinc, to get everything in the right ratios. And if you haven't seen my video on this one right here, I put it up here. Check it out.